Hi, it's time for another verb of the day. Today's verb is accrue. Let's take a look at some of the definitions or ways that we use this verb. The first two definitions of accrue uh, are very much related. The first being uh, that someone is receiving money or benefits in some regular or increasing amounts over time. And our second definition is um, kind of the, the person who is or the entity who is accumulating money or benefits. So kind of think of those building up. Uh, this particular verb has been used in a reading passage that I've been using in one of my classes the last uh, few days. And uh, the way this verb gets used uh, is to mean uh, someone is building up credits towards a certificate. So that would be that receiving benefits uh, definition here. A third way you might hear accrue used is to mean to come about as a natural growth or the result of some action. So with this particular definition, I uh, my mind goes to literature and I feel like I've, I've read authors use phrases uh, like a character or a person had accrued wisdom or knowledge. So as kind of the process of learning and growing, living life, they, uh, they have this result, knowledge. A fourth way you might hear the verb accrue used is very specific to the field of accounting. So that definition is to make a charge at the end of some financial period for work that has been done but hasn't been invoiced um, or, or the company hasn't paid an expense yet, but they know they owe someone else money in the future. As we look at some related words, I'll, I'll connect that as well. So you might hear this verb used if you're working in accounting and finance at a, a more regular uh, interval, and it's going to tie back to this fourth definition. You should know the verb accrue is a regular verb. To make the progressive form of this verb, we need to drop the E and add ing to form accruing. The past tense and participle forms of this verb can be made by just adding the letter D since this verb already ends in an E. Our base verb accrue, oo, ends in a vowel sound. And vowel sounds are always voiced sounds. So our past tense ending is just going to make a D sound. It should sound like this, accrued, accrued. Okay. Now, there aren't any phrasal verbs that we need to study, so that's going to allow us to focus on our verb tense practice today. We're going to focus on the present perfect and the future perfect. Let's start uh, with the present perfect. We use this verb tense to talk about an action that started in the past and continues into the present, but we also use it to describe an action that occurred at some unknown point in the past. To make the present perfect, I need two parts. I need to use have or has. That's going to be uh, dependent on what my subject is. And then I'm going to use the participle form of the verb. Let's take a look at an affirmative example. He has accrued four years of service at the organization through three departments. Okay. So this sentence is going to kind of tie back to those first two definitions we looked at. So accumulating, building up, uh, here's something that's increasing in time, uh, and that is how long he has served an organization. Now, if I want to make a negative present perfect sentence, my structure is going to be to start with my subject and then have or has, depending on what that subject is, then not, and then the participle form of the verb. You can see that in the example. They haven't accrued many wins this season, but they are gaining a lot of experience. So uh, I saw a sentence very similar to this uh, in connection to sports. Um, so it was referencing uh, some individual uh, tennis players on a high school team. And so collectively, um, they were not accumulating or building up a lot of wins, but this person was trying to find the, the positive to it. They were getting experience.
If I want to make a yes or no question in the present perfect, I'm going to start with have or has, then I'm going to have my subject, and then the participle form of the verb. You can see that here. Has the debt accrued a lot of interest? Okay. Again, this is connecting back to those first two definitions, right? So uh, interest is something that many times is going to build up or increase over time. It's pretty common to hear this verb used in connection uh, to interest on loans um, and, and other kind of similar financial arrangements. Now let's talk talk about the future perfect. This isn't a verb tense that I practice often in my videos, uh, but I thought it might, might work well here. So it's really common for us to use the future perfect when we're noting that some action is going to be completed at some point in the future. Okay? To make the future perfect, my structure is going to be to start with my subject, then I'm going to use will, then have, and then the participle form. Okay? And I want to note, no matter what the subject is, the structure is will, have, and then the participle. So we're not using has here in the future perfect. Here's an example sentence. By age 50, she will have accrued $500,000 in retirement savings. So here we have some point in the future, and we know she will have accumulated or saved this particular amount of money. Now if you want to make a negative future perfect sentence, our structure here is going to be to use will, then not, then have, and then our participle form of the verb. Here's another example. You won't have accrued much credit card debt before starting the new job. Okay. So here, uh, someone maybe has a, a certain start date in mind in, into the future here, and um, someone else maybe is, is reviewing their financial records, they're planning, they're spending, and noting you will not have accumulated a lot of debt by that point in the future. If you want to make a yes or no question in the future perfect, we're going to start with will, then we're going to have our subject, then have and then the participle. Here's another example. Will he have accrued enough PTO by September to take vacation? Okay. So here we have that point in time in the future, the month of September. And another way you hear this verb accrue used is in connection to paid time off or vacation days. At some companies, you will earn a number of um, vacation hours. That, uh, per pay period, right? And so here we're kind of wondering, will enough uh, have been saved or accumulated so that that person can take a vacation in the future? Now let's spend a moment looking at some words that are related to our verb accrue. The first word we're going to look at is the noun accrual. This can have a couple meanings. One is just to refer to that accumulation or the increase of payments or benefits over a period of time. An example of this might be, the accrual of interest on student loans has been paused through August 31st. Okay, so for many people, interest continues to build up on their student loans, but we've had a bit of a pause um, due to the pandemic and uh, the kind of the financial problems that it caused for uh, millions of people. Um, and so that's what this sentence is referencing, kind of this, uh, this normal increase has been paused or, or stopped for a certain period of time. A second way you'll hear accrual used as a noun connects back to that fourth definition of the verb, uh, the one that's connected to the field of accounting. So um, the noun accrual can be referred uh, or can be used to refer to a charge um, for work that's been done uh, but not yet invoiced or not yet paid. So an example of this, you might hear accountants talking, uh, a bookkeeper even, and uh, one asking another, have you recorded the accruals yet? So the here is, is helping us see or maybe note um, that we're using this particular word as a noun in the sentence. 
Now, not to be confusing, but accrual could also be used as an adjective. And again, uh, this very much connects to the field of accounting. So you'll hear accrual used uh, to describe a method of accounting where one recognizes income when it is earned okay, or expenses when they are incurred. Um, and you might be wondering, well, yeah, that makes sense, especially if you're not an accountant. Um, this is different. There's another method of counting called the cash method. So then you recognize income when you get the cash. You recognize the expenses when you pay out the cash. So these are two different things. Now, if you've not worked in business and or you're not familiar with accounting and you're looking at some of these and thinking, oh, I don't understand this, don't worry. Um, these, these are very specific to that particular field. Um, so if you're not into accounting and finance and, and other kind of business concepts, um, you, can, you can quickly move through this part of the video. <laughs> the last word I'm going to leave with you, leave you with today is the adjective accruable. And I hope you notice that suffix A-B-L-E, able, right? So we know that's going to play into this definition. So here it means having the ability to be accrued. An example of this, again, you might hear accountants or other uh, financial professionals ask something like, are these liabilities accruable in the current fiscal year? So uh, can we recognize these expenses right now or for some reason must we wait until a future accounting year? Thanks so much for watching today's video. I hope you have a great day.